everyone, welcome back to Adobe Live here on Behance. We are in Barcelona, Spain at OFF. This is amazing. We can see the sky. Such a beautiful sight. I'm here with Michael Schauer. Welcome, Michael. Hi. Hello. So hey. is this your first live stream? Um, not my first live stream in general. Oh. I was at the Adobe Stock Night uh, ah, where we did a live stream as well. Right. But it's, um, it's an hour, right? It's right an now. hour. Yeah, it's the longest. 55 minutes. Wow. <laughs> Technically. Don't, Don't run out of things to say. <laughs> Never do. We'll, right. we'll be asking questions from the chat. Chat, hello, how mm -hmm. you doing? We've got Jeremy, we've got Mohammed, Ryan, what's up? Ryan is one of our longtime viewers, how you doing? Uh, so if you have any questions for Michael, please feel free to ask them, because we have them for an hour. And Michael, why don't you introduce yourself and let us know what you do? Yeah, um, I'm basically a landscape and nature photographer. And yeah, I got started a few years ago mm -hmm. with mobile photography and in my hometown of Munich. Oh, cool. I just photographed um, churches and everything. And then I got a camera and basically moved out to see, um, yeah, the lakes and the mountains of mm -hmm. Bavaria, like yeah. my, my home state. Wow. And yeah, then I kind of figured out that this is what I want to do and just put all my time and money into photography mm -hmm. and learning how to edit properly. Right. Um, yeah, now I'm here, obviously. Now you're here. So. <laughs> this is it. You're here now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have someone, hello from Berlin. Hello, hello from Argentina. What's up? Hello, Luke. Grand Freud, how you doing? So you said that you just got started a couple years ago? Yes. Like how many years ago? Uh, 2014, end okay. of 2014, Okay, yes. so you have done a lot in just four short years. At Y you could say that. You could if you say want. that. Yes. yes, true. And I have your Behance portfolio yes. pulled up, so you all in chat can see the kind of work that Michael does. Obviously, super beautiful, almost surreal landscapes. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to go for like a cinematic and, and a dreamy look from time to time. Yeah. Um, right. What, yeah, th these ones are actually my my newest uh, things. Cool. Let's check this out. Yeah. So droning, you do some drone work. Yes. Cool, I, tell me I about do. that. Um, yeah, I basically got the Mavic um, like a year ago mm -hmm. and just was super into it and like all the possibilities that it, it offers, like right. um, giving, giving you so much space that you can explore because yeah. you're free in this three-dimensional space and you can, you're not tied to the ground. Mm -mm. Like, and yeah, you Literally. just can fly around and uh, capture scenes like these that have, yeah. to my knowledge, at this time when I took this like uh, one year and two months ago, uh, have never been captured before. Right, you're a pioneer. That's amazing. And the Mavic is DJI. DJI. Yes. Right, and we have the DJI booth over oh, there. Over here, yeah. <laughs> What's up, DJI hey. over there? <laughs> uh, cool. So I've never touched a drone in my life. Was right. it a steep learning curve for you to learn how to use it? Mm, actually, I would, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say so because I never had the pleasure to fly with drones or model airplanes or right. what you do as a little child. Yeah. Um, before, and I basically just read the manual. This is a video. Ooh, um, I'll play it while you talk. It's metal, so. Okay, I'll turn down the volume. <laughs> yeah, it, it could be loud. There we go. Um, Perfect. And I. No, actually, I, I just read the manual and mm -hmm. watched some YouTube tutorials on how, how to do it and basically got started right away. Yeah. And it was with the Mavic, it was a very intuitive kind gotcha. of flying. Right. You weren't scared that you were going to crash it? Uh, yes, I was, okay. but I was very, very <laughs> careful. So uh -huh. I avoided most of the crashes. Right. Ooh, Simon says this is dope. Dope work. So what's the story behind this? Did uh, you just make this for fun or were you working with an actual band? Um, the band that I did this with, Chambers is the name. They're a German uh, mm -hmm. metal band from Berlin. Right. Um, they, they showed me the song that this mm -hmm. video is, is for and I said, oh my God, this is so good. I want to make something yeah, out you're of inspired. this. And I had all this um, drone footage of Iceland mm -hmm. uh, that I collected over my last few trips. Right. And yeah, then I basically just said, okay, let's do this. I'm, I'm going to do the video for you and may go a bit crazy with the editing here. Here yeah. you can see some oh, mirrors. Oh, it's like mirrored. Yes. Let's go back to the actual video as it plays. Yeah, yeah the video is like uh, diverging into like a funny space. Yeah? Yeah, during 
during the video. So it's now everything is like normal. Uh -huh. And then at like we'll five or six minutes, the, the mirror effects oh, start coming. Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll see if the internet cooperates. Yeah, we see. Oh, yeah, actually uh, yeah. pretty, pretty well. Pretty good. Nice, nice. job, internet. Appreciate you. Uh, Alby says, you are just great. <laughs> Thank you very That's much. very nice of you, Alby. Everyone say hello to Michael in chat if this is your first time meeting him, or if you're already a fan of his work, let him know that as well. Yeah. Um, I actually knew of Michael before today. Oh, I see. Yeah, here. There you go. Uh, the, the crazy so things cool. start happening. Yeah, I, I want to watch this after the stream so I can actually hear the music. Yeah. But uh, Michael actually worked with my team at Adobe to kind of show the making of one of your processes, or yes. processes. So very cool, made a little video. Very nice. Wrote a little article. So if this uh, talk that Michael gives, uh, you want to learn even more, you can check this out. It's on helpx.adobe.com. Learn how he edits. Yeah. Cool, so what are we going to be focusing on today? Because we're not going to do portfolio reviews. This is all about your work and how you do it. Well, I thought I'd bring some of my images that, I, that I've taken and basically just show, show a little bit of how I edit, mm -hmm. how I take images, what are my thoughts when I press the shutter. Yeah. And basically just a little bit of of what, what, what's it going on in my brain when yeah. I'm doing all the photo stuff. Cool, that sounds good. And maybe after, if we run out of time or if we have time at the end, we can go back to your Behance and actually look at some of your projects. Yeah, sure. We, cool. can, we can totally do this. Sounds good. Good. So let's see, ooh, uh, Aisha says, great work, I love your profile. Yes, everyone can go follow Michael on Behance. It's just his name, behance.net slash Michael Schauer. Yeah. Pretty sweet, and also probably Instagram. Yeah, Instagram is uh, Michael Schauer photo mm -hmm. with Perfect. PH. Uh huh. And, and I see there's Vimeo where you could probably see your video. Yeah, yeah. That this this video and and another one that I did. Perfect. Yeah. Cool. So everyone go check that out. But if you'd like to learn how he edits his photos, he's about to tell you. Stay right here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, then should we just? Yeah, sure. The screen will pop over to your computer. All right. In just a moment. Good. Then um, I'm make myself some space. Can we just yeah, move this a little bit? Yeah. Let's try and bit? see if we can move it. Yeah. Wonderful. Without unplugging anything. I'll yeah, move this. Sure. How about this that? This works. Works just fine. So, Give him um, some space. Give him some elbow room. Nice. <laughs> so, this um, is how he edits. <laughs> <laughs> At least the chat uh, sees here what images I have chosen, and uh -huh. um, we can make a, a little poll if, if, Ooh, if you want. Sure, let's so do it. The, the chat can just say 1 to 12, or mm -hmm. the first one that, that says a number uh, can say something, and then we just... Um, have a look at the image that is chosen. Cool, so chat, let us know. One through 12, you can see on his screen, uh, numbers, they're above us. Which one do you want to see first? You're gonna yeah. show others, but this will be the first one. Yes. And we already have great questions coming in. Yeah, so we'll see. ask those after we get a yeah. number chosen. Ooh, okay, Mark says three, Hazel right. says three as well. All right, then three it is, and cool. then five will come shortly after. All right. Three is really popular, maybe because yeah. it has like a central subject. Yeah, this is also like this, um, there's this plane wreck in Iceland Yeah. Um, that crashed there, I believe in the 70s. And it's still there? Yeah, it's still there. What? It's quite well con conserved because uh -huh. it's lying at a black sand beach, but um, it's so yeah, it's obviously it's snowy right now, right. and therefore it's just everything is blown out. Right. Simon says three, Iceland? Yes, it's Got it, Iceland. Simon. <laughs> um, so we can just quickly jump in. I did quite a lot of work on this one, actually. Great, um, let's see. I don't know if we are, no, we don't have a before and after. But I can try to set it back to, yeah. This is the original oh, the image. the original, okay. Yes. And what I basically done was make everything brighter and uh -huh. brighter and brighter so that you really get this, yeah, like, minimalist fine art look mm -hmm. and uh, just take out most of the colors make the whites really really white right i was gonna say it looks like you made it monochromatic or grayscale but mm -hmm. there's still a little bit yeah it's a it's a, it's a splash of color and yeah. i always like to keep it keep mm -hmm. it that way right so when it loads we can see a little bit of green and oh. maybe blue in there yeah, as some well blue for sure so 
Wow. Yeah, basically what I did was just pull the lights down, mm -hmm. but um, push the whites up. And also push the, the darks up. Uh huh. Uh, so so that we get all of the details the out details of this. The details and the shadows. But it would, uh, yeah. But there's still a lot of contrast. There's yeah, There's still definitely. some dark darks and some light lights. Yeah, that's definitely something that I always try to go for. Mm -hmm. Like, um, put in the maximum amount of contrast that is just, um, yeah, before it looks silly. And yeah, Justin yeah. Bieber made a, made a video clip there. Gotcha. Before or after you took this photo? Uh, I believe it was... After. Okay. Yeah. He skated on the on the plane, actually. Oh, are you allowed to do that? Or uh, was he just being Justin Bieber? No, nah, I believe he's just being Justin just Bieber being right Justin there. Justin Bieber. But, yeah, we all done true. some dumb things, yeah. It's true. We've all been Justin Bieber at one time or another. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and, yeah, with the, with the tone curve, I also added some contrast with, like, when you have, like, the slight S-curve, you get this little push of contrast right in. And, uh -huh. um... It's really working out just fine. Yeah. And as you can see there, I haven't done much to the colors at all. Uh -huh. um, also here, what you can see here, I, I muted the blues and the aquamarine uh, okay. tones. If I haven't done that, it would look like this. Right. Still all right, but too much blue. It just okay. um, diverts the, the view right. from the main subject, in uh -huh. my opinion. And so we make this... Um, go back and then we have like the nice focus on there. Wow. And so how do you know what you need to edit? Just practice or is there a specific formula you follow? Mm, basically I'm just going from the top, uh -huh. which would be white balance, uh, to right at the bottom. Yeah, and just kind of pushing and pulling as yeah, you go? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, sure, it's, it's practice of like four years mm -hmm. of... Um, basically doing hours of work in Lightroom almost every day. Yeah. So I, I really practice a lot. Gotcha. I feel like when I edit photos, I often mm. over edit because I don't really know when to stop. Mm. How do mm. you know when to stop? Yeah, that's something that I talked about in the workshop that I was giving uh, today oh, as well. Um, you just have to like pull yourself a little back and then look mm -hmm. at the image from like a greater distance right. in your mind. Mm -hmm. And when you have the feeling that you are maybe over editing something, you just have to make a break. Yeah. Like walk walk around 10 minutes in, mm -hmm. your, in your flat or go with your dog or mm -hmm. something and then come back. And when it, and then when it looks bad, you, you will know. You do know. Yeah. Sometimes you don't know why though. Like, why does this look so bad? Yeah, some, uh, there's just something, some feeling that tells you this is not done mm -hmm. yet. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's just like the aesthetic that I developed over the years is um, um, kind of kind of these muted, muted colors, but yeah. very contrasty. It's still very rich, even though it's muted. Mm. Right. Rodrigo yeah. says, great work. Dushi says, yeah, this Thank is fantastic. Adobe Live loves this one. <laughs> What's up, Adobe Live? That's nice. Yeah. Ask us questions if you have any more. Oh, someone was wondering up here what your favorite type of client to work with is. Oh, I, c I can go on this um, a little bit later. I just want to finish talking Perfect. about this one. Yeah, of course. Um, I was just checking whether I had like brushes or, or a gradient or... Uh, or other filters there. No, mm -hmm. it's actually not brushed. Oh. So it's just global adjustments, no mm -hmm. split toning. I sometimes like to do split toning, yeah. but it's uh, I have kind of a hard time doing it. It's tough. Yeah. Also tough to make it not look gimmicky. Yes, definitely. Like it's pretty popular at the yeah, moment. Yeah, you could sure go for like a like the standard Hollywood look, which would be like, I don't yeah. know, this, and then you could add like a little bit of skin tone. Uh -huh. Yeah, so we got the standard war movie Hollywood mm -hmm. look, very nice. Right. Yeah, let's end this. And yeah, basically I've not done so much to this image, except desaturating the blue tones, mm -hmm. making a little bit of tone curve. And kind of blowing out the whites a little bit. Yes, and blowing out the whites. That was kind so. of the big move that you did. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So I, I can I can show, um, I can reverse these sliders uh -huh. for once, so we can see, okay, it looks like this now. Oh, that's a very like film noir. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So what I, what I did, if I can remember what I did there, <laughs> is, uh, yeah, just pull out the blacks and then 
push the whites right up and mm -hmm. now we're almost having yeah, the same there. look that we that we had right. okay now we just have to like add 1.5 steps of yeah there you go yeah now we are almost at the wow. same thing yeah and it's just like playing around with the mm -hmm. sliders as much trial and error and yeah um sometimes sometimes it sticks and sometimes you just have to do it again and then it's still a fun right. experience to learn yeah you can get you totally different yeah end results yeah definitely wow so um what would be my favorite type of client to work with this yes. is uh, actually a great question um i'm doing quite a lot of um or not quite a lot but it's became more and more mm -hmm. in the years um, with uh, automotive oh interesting firms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and these are usually very inspired and great people because they have great agencies because they, yeah, they can afford it. Yeah, that's big money. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, those people are, are very good to work with. Yeah, so what kind of, are they asking you to take photos of their products or what kind of stuff? Yeah, definitely mm -hmm. like more product shoots, mm -hmm. maybe like um, a documentary of, oh. of one trip mm -hmm. and then they make a narrative out of it. Oh, is it the kind of thing where they're like, drive this car around and then take pictures while you drive? That kind of thing? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't drive, I just take the photos. Oh, okay, you're but just in the some, passenger seat. <laughs> yeah, some, sometimes I get to drive, but yeah. I'm not taking photos then. I just, I'm responsible. You're and not I've, doing this? Do, do, do. No, 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 I don't do this. Uh, no. He's a good driver. He's flying his drone <laughs> as he's driving. Yeah, sometimes I do this as well. Yeah, somebody was wondering what drone do you use? And it's... The Mavic, but is yeah. it a specific Yeah, I, ha I have the Mavic, mm -hmm. like the first Mavic when it came out, yeah. and I also do have the Inspire 2, ah, which is the, the like uh, Ferrari model of, oh. of it. it. It flies like a truck, but it's yeah. like the Ferrari of That's so cool. Drones. Yeah, please keep asking questions if you have them. We've yeah. had some good ones so far. So... Um, Number five was the crest. Yes, that I, with the whales. I believe, yeah, the whales. This is uh, actually one of my favorite images that I have taken to date. Yeah, um, special. Yeah, because it was in a whale watching tour, also in Iceland. Many of my images are from Iceland. Right, actually. It's a beautiful place. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Can I will be back there in in a few months? Oh, cool! For mm. more photos. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, also pursuing like a bigger project that I'm currently working on. We can touch about this Aha. or touch on this later as cool. well. Cool, sounds good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this was a, a whale watching trip and um, we saw basically saw the humpback whales just playing around mm -hmm. and um, I had the drone with me and then I asked, asked the captain, always ask before you... That's a good tip. Yeah. Um, and then I just started from the boat. This so you're on the boat? Yeah, this is me. Whoa, right cool. There. You are in this photo with the whales. Yeah, definitely. It's just like a whale selfie. Uh huh. A whale selfie. Or, or something like One this. One of a kind selfie. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, so, so this little blob there is me. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just standing there paralyzed and totally in awe of what yeah. I'm seeing. Like these four beautiful, huge creatures. Right. It's funny because you're like looking at a little screen at mm -hmm. the whales, but the whales are like really close to you. Yeah, right, totally. Physically. Yeah, they came even more close. Wow. I didn't got this with the drone, but they were just right right next to us, like uh -huh. here. You almost could touch them with your hand. Yeah, they were curious. Totally. Yeah, whales are actually really intelligent animals. So That's amazing. I've never mm. seen one in real life. Are you? I know. Need, need to. I live by the ocean. I should yeah, have seen where it do, by where now. Where do you live? We're in San Francisco. Oh yeah, there. Oh, so whales perfect are there. place to see some whales, Definitely. but not yet. someday, Definitely. someday when I get my drone, <laughs> I'll find some whales. Yeah, take some pictures. Cool. So, what was the editing like for this one? So the editing of this one is a little bit more, yeah, sophisticated. Um, right. I would say mm -hmm. we can look at the before image. So. Oh my gosh. You see, it's quite overexposed. Yeah. Because you like have to uh, just be really quick, and you just don't have the. Um, time to adjust all, all the settings because you have to get the moment right. Right. This almost looks like it could have been taken on a phone, like just with this yeah. type of lighting, but you really nailed it. Yeah, totally. This, that's the, what the raw format does mm -hmm. does for images. It yeah. like, gives you so many possibilities, so it's very amazing. Mm -hmm. So what I just did was um, I basically um, 
lowered the exposure. Gotcha. Not, with, not with the global exposure slider, but with the more refined ones. I just Ooh. pulled back all the lights mm -hmm. and pulled back the blacks. So okay. we can have a look at it without the blacks pulled down. It would oh, okay. look like this. Yeah. So not very much contrast, very flat image. Yep. And when you have the blacks down, like uh, 63, yeah. you really get the punch mm -hmm. in the image. Right, a lot and of movement. Yeah, totally. And also like some global clarity slider, because clarity just uh, boosts up uh, contrasty areas uh -huh. even more and it makes them stand out even more. Yeah. And you can surely overdo this. I was going to say, like, I try to stay away from mm. bumping the contrast too much, but you can definitely do it in a smart way. Definitely, yeah. I personally um, see that I don't go over 20 with, mm -hmm. with this value. Okay, if that's your limit. Yeah, if it would go to 80, it would, like, would look at this, which is still not mm -hmm. bad. It's but not terrible, no. Yeah, but you um, lose lose track of the main subject, which yep. is definitely the whales. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so we setting back to 20 with this one. Yeah. And you can also, what I did here especially was usi using brushes. Like oh, when okay. you go to the mask over here, you can see I brushed in over oh, the whales. Oh, yeah. Yeah, make it visible again here. And here you can say clarity is at 56. Mm -hmm. uh, I added a bit of lights to like accentuate the um, the flips, yeah. the flippers, <laughs> and um, when we put it out, yeah, we can just see. Totally okay, a difference. Yeah, they are not popping anymore, mm -hmm. and now they're like. Right, but it doesn't look like you edited it to look like that. Mm. It looks very natural. Yeah, it, this is just the thing. You you don't just don't overdo it. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's, uh, I'm so inspired. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go edit some photos. Yeah. That's so cool. Uh, Ty wants to know, how do you find work? Are you a freelancer? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm a freelancer. And basically what you have to do as a freelancer is write emails all day <laughs> or be really uh, present or visible on either social media or mm -hmm. where the people that you want to work for are. Yeah, right. So in, in my case, I try to post a lot on, on Behance um, because I know there are creative people, design people, right. agencies. Always that, on there. Yeah, that I want to work with. Also, right. Instagram is a thing. So um, totally. I got some jobs off of this, but yeah. also from uh, personal relations Connections. with people. Yeah. yeah. Do you find that people mostly email you or do they message you on Behance or on Instagram? Um, they email me because my email is very visible that's everywhere. That's really important. So, yeah, so that's... Um, that would be one of the first tips I would give to any yeah. photographer or, or basically freelancer. Mm -hmm. Make yourself um, easy to contact. Yeah. So yeah. You think you should have your email on like wherever you are, your yeah, email should be definitely. as well. Ma make a, make a shirt is. of your email address yes. or, or don't. <laughs> email me. Why yeah. not? You should like edit your email very slightly into all of your photos. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's like but, a but not with a shady watermark. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you should, to be ironic. That's a thing. Well, we're over ironic, I guess. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so, Grand Fraud, or mm -hmm. Grand how do you say it in French? Freud? Uh, I, I can't pronounce it. Yeah, I, he was making trying. fun of me earlier because I was trying to pronounce it in French. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, but he was saying I always do something like 5 to 15 positive clarity to give some punch. Yeah, that's that's a good mm -hmm. um, uh, range. Good, good, good range, mm -hmm. good interval to um, to give the punch yeah. to the image. But because when you go much over this, the image will become flat in its contrast way, and when you're under it, it will look like a little bit dreamy. You can always uh, go for this yeah. look as well. Sure, totally. Um, but yeah. Um, depends on what, what you want to get out of, yeah. out of the image, basically. I think that's so important. Like, you can edit your photos to tell whatever story you want to Definitely, tell. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, you're not just stuck in like, well, I have to edit it this way because that's how you should mm. edit it. Yeah, definitely. There are some rough guidelines that I kind of try to follow, yeah. like maybe using yeah, most, of, most of my Instagram. This is a bad example because most of the things are 
pretty dark, dark but mm -hmm. maybe we will have a look at another picture. Um, uh, this one. Yeah, that's got a lot of lights and dark. Yeah, yeah. You see here the histogram is very evenly distributed. Mm -hmm. Yep. And goes almost from total black to total white. Yeah. And so we have so much space to work with mm -hmm. rather than all pixels are crammed up on one side or the right. other side of the image mm -hmm. or in the middle. And um, so it becomes very rich in, in contrast mm -hmm. to the image. And contrast is um, next to color, which is also a form of contrast, yeah. so you could say. Totally. Um, I feel like in these kind of images, you have to really decide what your focal point is. Definitely, because since yeah. the contrast is like the entire mm. histogram, so would, the, would it be like that mm. is the focus? What do you think the focus is? Yeah, definitely those those two people because they yeah. are standing out so much. Right. It's like, such a tiny little detail, but it's like yeah. your eye is seeking for something to land on. Yeah, totally. And there and they when are. And when the eye recognizes uh, human forms, basically just a silhouette. I mm -hmm. mean, this is a one person like just black and one person with a blue jacket. So, mm -hmm. uh, and you wouldn't be able to see which color their their clothes are actually right. when you're from looking at from this point yeah. I had this image printed in like 2 meters to, to oh, 140 wow. and then you could see it but yeah. um, it's not not apparent and also mm -hmm. not on like the, the screen of your phone when you mm -hmm. post it on Instagram or something like right. that right so yeah wow um, That's yeah. Really, where was this taken? Uh, also in Iceland ah. in a location called Kalingafell I hope it, I pronounced it right right here <laughs> uh, but it's basically just a two and a half hours driving on gravel roads to get there wow. and it's, it's honestly amazing because all Worth of it. this fog is um, hot springs. Oh, cool. Yeah. Wow. And it's just so, such a rich area. Mm -hmm. You have the glacier here in, in the background. Uh -huh. This is actually a glacier. Then you have these sand dune mountain things. I mm -hmm. don't know what they are. And then mm -hmm. the hot springs. And yeah. You can imagine it. it. It smells horrible, like very of sulfur, so yeah. rotten eggs. A right. bit. But it's a. <laughs> it's part of the experience. Yeah. The landscape. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Wow, that's so cool. Ryan says he wishes he could be in Barcelona. So does Rodrigo. It's pretty nice, you guys. It's very nice. It's my first time actually, and I'm totally blown away by how yeah. lovely the city is. It's. It's perfect. Mm. Are you gonna take any photos here? Uh, I don't have my camera with me. Oh. So. Your phone? Good. Yeah, I, I do. But yeah. uh, when I'm not out there like shooting like proper photography, I'm really the worst photographer. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm really not not good at. I can't take a, a photo of a coffee cup from above for yeah. the life of me. Well, that's probably okay. I don't think you. There's enough of those. <laughs> probably out there. yeah yeah i literally just took one <laughs> and put it on my instagram story <laughs> so yeah that's funny i i wouldn't be able to do this mm. so yeah this is like really where you feel comfortable yeah definitely shine. yeah it's yeah I, I have my yeah def this is definitely my comfort mm -hmm. zone my yeah and you said it started with like architecture churches yeah a bit because you have many many beautiful churches in munich mm -hmm. and um when I was here yesterday, I obviously uh, had a look at the Sagrada Familia. Oh, yeah. And I was only on the outside because uh, there was 50 people in, in, the, mm -hmm. in the queue. It's crowded. Um, but it was, was beautiful. It just reminded me of how, how I got started mm -hmm. and how this beautiful facet looks. And yeah, then I also took some pictures oh, of okay. the church. So yeah. you have to. You Definitely. Just have to. Yeah, my, my dad told me also, hey, go look at the church. And I, yeah, I, I was planning to. Mm -hmm. You're like, come on, Dad. Yeah, Give sure. me some credit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we were looking at it, but I was surprised that there were so many cranes and like construction mm -hmm. tools. Yeah, it, it will never like, be finished, basically. No, and I'm like, that kind of ruins the, the ambiance. Mm -hmm. But there's plenty of other beautiful structures as yeah, well. Yeah, some people say um, the cranes are basically a part of the church right That's now true. or part of the experience. Yeah, I got to accept it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I... I quite like them actually. Mm -hmm. So oh yeah, it's a mm -hmm. nice little architectural aspect yeah, to it. Yeah, juxtaposition kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, Denise wants to know if we can see the church photos anywhere. Do you Nowhere. still have them? <laughs> He's like, they burned. <laughs> <laughs> I said goodbye to them. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's like um, they're like one of the the first um, the first photos that I that I've taken and mm -hmm. I almost deleted all of them from my social media. Yeah. I believe I have them on my phone somewhere, mm -hmm. but 
I would have to look. You'd have to dig them out of the grave. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Ahmed just realized that they were people in the image. Yeah, definitely they are. Such a nice little tiny detail. Yeah. And I can't believe when you zoom in that you can see so much detail Let's in see. their clothing and stuff. Yeah, definitely. That's magic of, mm -hmm. of high megapixel cameras. Yeah. So what did you use to take this? I'm guessing not your drone. No, it was taken with a uh, Nikon D800. Mm -hmm. And uh, that I had at this time, and also like a, I believe this is, um, how much millimeter is this? Uh, 80 millimeter, all right. Yeah, I had the, uh, my, my very long zoom lens mm -hmm. on it. I have an 80 to 400 millimeter Whoa. zoom lens. And this is also the lens that I'm shooting most of my not drone work mm. on because mm -hmm. it really allows one to um, focus on one subject yeah. and, and to isolate one subject. Yeah. And mm, let me just quickly check. No, I. Oh, yeah, this one actually. Let's check it out. Uh, this one is actually also shot with the 80 to 400. Wow, in Iceland? Yeah, also <laughs> in Iceland with uh, 175 millimeters. Okay. So it's um, really like compressing the clouds and, and getting them into the more into the foreground and more to this black line which separates right. everything. And somewhere there is a, is a bird, I believe. Yeah, oh, here, there it is. here it is. <laughs> yeah. I, actually, I, I had this exhibition in, in Munich there. I had this exhibition in Munich and um, this picture was also one of the printed photos. So it also was like uh, two meters mm -hmm. times 140. And this was actually also the first time that I recognized that there is a bird, You're which like, oh, look at that. <laughs> made, it, made it even funnier because yeah. um, I, I liked this image a lot before. But even even more since I know, oh, okay, there's a, there's a small bird. That's so funny. Even in the previous image, you had like these tiny little subjects, mm. and in this, you have this tiny little bird. Yeah, it's a little totally. secret. Yeah, that's cool. Do you have a favorite lens that you like to shoot with? Yeah, it's definitely would be the 82 400. Uh, yeah, that seems um, that, like you can do a lot with it. Yeah, it's super versatile. super versatile. Mm -hmm. The uh, image stabilization is a dream mm -hmm. as well, and. Also, you can get very much light in, actually. It oh. is, although it has like 4.5 to 5.6 um, mm -hmm. as a maximum aperture, yeah. I always, uh, almost always shoot at uh, f8. Oh, nice. So, yeah, that's basic landscape photographer's rule. Very cool. I'd <laughs> like to know more of these rules that you have. I don't know a lot about landscape photography specifically. Um, all right, rules. Michael's rules. So, where do we start? Do you submit to stock is a question. Yes, Ooh. I do. You I'm, do? Yeah, cool. I'm an Adobe Stock Premium contributor. That's a big thing. And it's a big deal. Uh, yeah, totally. I'm, I'm super honored to, to <laughs> be on there and actually making, uh, actually to make some money over mm -hmm. it as yeah, well. Right. With um, images like, like these, which right. is basically just, just a wave. <laughs> but it's uh, so atmospheric. Yeah. There's so much emotion. So yeah, here we can actually see a bit of those rules. Um, I always yeah. try to do the um, try to follow the rule of thirds. Right. Um, I have the crop tool here, so you can see here. Mm -hmm. Here's one third. Here's the other third, and here's the top third. Yep. And also, you can separate the image like like this in horizontals. Right. Right on this uh, edge, the image cuts off from being very bright to a little bit modest uh -huh. and here it's like yellowish. Wow, I didn't realize that. That's cool. Yeah, and um, basically that's like the only rule that I'm really trying to follow is just make a composition that, that makes sense right. somehow. That's interesting to your eye. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. And that um, gives perspective. Also, on this image and this image, we will have a look at... Um, both. Can we do this? Uh, yes. Nice. Great. Uh, what you can see here is like the use of, of leading lines because uh -huh. the image starts down there and just leads the viewer with also, again, very much contrast mm -hmm. from the bright whites to the dark blacks, mm -hmm. uh, leads the viewer to this mountain. That's and perfect. Uh, which is also very contrasty mm -hmm. in comparison to the beach and also here is the blue water, and then here is the um, orange or almost mm -hmm. yellow um, sand thing. Yeah. I don't know what it is actually. <laughs> and yeah. here, here is the same with this um, very defined black line mm -hmm. leading um, the viewer into the distance, where in in the middle there is the fog, which separates the image into like three or four parts, if right. you want. 
like one is here, one is there, here's a darker part and here's a brighter part. Yeah, did you do I that think. on purpose? Like, did you burn it to make it darker and um, lighter? Uh, let's, let's check, actually. Let's see if your um, brush marks are there. Yeah, I'm not actually sure with this one, but we can see. Um, I put in some brushwork, but I believe it was only, yeah, to make oh, okay. cool. to make the um, path or the beach a mm -hmm. little bit more pop. This is actually a beach, oh, okay. but I see. it's winter. Mm -hmm. And also here I added some more clarity, mm -hmm. so we can see again, clarity helps to make things go a little bit more popping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, I, s I noticed this one, you really are kind of ignoring the rule of thirds, like you have that lining going straight up the middle. Yeah, definitely. But that can still work. Yeah, definitely. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, most of the time, or, or sometimes actually, uh, it works very well when you have like a central point of focus. Mm -hmm. And um, also in the, the third Im uh, first image that I've shown, no rule of thirds either. Mm -mm. Um, you just have like, here is like a middle, middle line which separates the ground from the sky, right. but also here, ground and sky are basically becoming the same. Mm -hmm. So, um, no, you don't really don't have to follow those those no. composition rules. Just make something that uh, makes sense to you mm -hmm. and um, is visually pleasing to your eye. And right. with time and experience, you will um, e even if others will not get the hang of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you're shooting for yourself and not for clients with um, restrictions or, or demands, right. just do whatever you want. Yeah, and so, it works. Yeah. Yeah. You can, I bet you could make any composition work if you just edit it just right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I think people would be interested to know um, your experience with stock and mm -hmm. how you found that. Because it's always nice to have like another revenue stream Definitely, coming yeah. and um, how do you go about getting that set up? Well, um, I got introduced to stock quite um, aggressively uh, with like every time you open the Creative Cloud app, mm -hmm. um, Adobe Stock pops it's like up. Stock. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And yeah, so I thought to myself, okay, um, I am working with stock photography mm -hmm. at my work. I, I used to do work at a uh, agency mm -hmm. back then. And they was also buying some stock photography, right. some free stock sites and mm -hmm. everything. Um, but we didn't have so many good images to choose from. Right. So it was the time of um, images displaying like stereotypical scenes and, and yeah. women laughing at their salads <laughs> and, and, and stuff like this, basically. Yes. We c you can still find that on Adobe Stock, but you can also find good stuff. Yeah, definitely. So <laughs> what I did was just upload my landscape photos that mm -hmm. I did, which had this yeah, kind of Instagram-y adventure mm -hmm. language yeah. that they speak. And yeah, maybe something resonated with Adobe because they asked me shortly after if I want to come to the premium program yeah. and then sell stock via the premium program, mm -hmm. and which has turned out to be very nice for yeah. me and also for them. Very many good corporations came out of this and yeah, I'm basically right. really, really happy to have the opportunity to offer this because it also helps me finance my projects mm -hmm. and travels. Yeah, and it's like you already have these images, so yeah, why not put them to use? Yeah, definitely. Also with video, yeah. with the drone, you can mm -hmm. basically film everything and you have like 4K yeah. video mm -hmm. and it will be maybe, it will be a shame to not use it mm -hmm. actually. Right. So I, what I'm doing is, um, yeah, Mac attack on desk, definitely. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> I'm looking at the monitor and it's like, whoosh. Yeah. Silver wave going yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, what I, what I was saying, uh, mm. when I'm flying with my drone, I take quite quite a time to find like the perfect composition mm -hmm. for a shot. Right. And in the time where I'm flying to this to the spot I'm mm -hmm. flying to, um, basically I'm covering much ground. Yeah. And I, I can use these... Uh, these images or these videos as B-roll for something yeah. like just mm -hmm. some drone flying over a road in Scotland or yeah. just be used for anything. Yeah, and it's <laughs> and it's just n not much effort and and uh, people should realize that um, you are just sitting on on this mountain of of potential yeah just money. sales or mm -hmm. revenue 
uh, that you could make if you like would upload it and, mm -hmm. and tag it. And the Adobe Stock tagging system is actually really intuitive because oh, yeah. uh, the Sensei system, I believe it's called, mm -hmm. it just should, it's really good at reading images and it's mm -hmm. suggesting what uh, yeah. keywords you can use. And uh, I'm just, it just gets better and better. And um, yeah, I'm I'm really blown away how good it has become. I agree. I download from stock all the time mm. working at Adobe. I'm like using it and I'm always using the, I, I find an image that I like and then I use that image to search for other images that are similar and I find stuff that I never would have found before. It's really cool. Makes my job a lot easier. Definitely, yes. <laughs> yeah, Ryan says, I try to get into photography but it's such a skill and an art. Do you have any tips on ha helping people to get into photography. Get into it without being overwhelmed by it. Um, yeah, as Nathan says, photography takes patience and good timing. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Everything already has been done. That's a good point. Yeah, definitely. Um, there are some locations, there are some locations that um, you could definitely say are shot to almost death or mm. so. But still, <coughs> with, especially with the rise of drones, you get new perspectives of, That's true. of um, the same old, old things. Or you can just try to do something else with the places entirely. Yep. Uh, there's this guy, Roy Mbu, his name is. Um, mm -hmm. And what he's doing basically is um, going out to Grand Canyon National Park, a mm -hmm. Monument Valley National Park yep. uh, at night. And then he encircles the uh, pillars with his drone mm -hmm. and on this drone there's a light strapped on so he gives them the pillars halos basically oh. and he takes long exposure shots mm -hmm. and this is something that has never been done before and mm -hmm. I already see people like copying it yeah be because it's just so groundbreakingly different mm -hmm. and so good yeah so um, <laughs> I, I would just say be creative but um, yeah just take your inspiration from like anywhere you can you want. Basically, I am not so super inspired by a lot of photographers, but uh, more like music and movies and oh, books and everything yep. like this. And um, this is kind of sets the mood for my work. Yeah. Like, I used to listen to a lot of, I don't know, Joy Division and, mm -hmm. and stuff like this, more more of the eerie type, yeah. reading Bukowski and, and mm -hmm. yeah, all this cliche stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so moody. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But it comes across in your work. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a really good point about being inspired, not just trying to recreate the photography, for example, that inspires you, but getting inspiration from other things. Yeah. It could be food. It could be magazine. It could be editorial design. Yeah, definitely. Just, just um, ask yourself, how does or how do different things make me feel mm -hmm. as a living, breathing person, Yeah, uh, so to speak. Right, and try uh, and capture that in your work. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And like when I, when I do, when I'm out shooting, I yeah. always try to uh, capture not only what is in front of, of my lens, mm. obviously this as well, right. but I always try to have a quick look in, inside myself and ask mm. myself, okay, how do I feel right now? What mm -hmm. do I want to, capture and um, yeah sometimes I, I'm just wandering around in like a like a forest and listening to movie soundtracks or that's cool like the Twin Peaks main yep. theme mm -hmm. or, or things like this <laughs> very moody yes wow. and I was actually in in a very moody forest and uh, mm -hmm. maybe Let's I see your moody forest yeah I let me see maybe I still have it on this laptop but I'm not sure anymore. Fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed indeed. <laughs> uh, it was actually done for a client. Oh. So. Is it a secret? Yeah, no, it's okay. been, been published already. So. Um, wow. Look I, at I that. can't. I can't make it big, unfortunately. But uh, oh yeah, this this will work, I guess. Yeah, that's my, my moody forest and it's a bit pixelated because it won't load properly mm -hmm. because the files are not on yeah, the... smart preview. Yeah, it's a smart preview, right. Yeah, and we just had this and I was listening to the Twin Peaks theme and I was like, oh my god, I'm... I'm here. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> wow, and I definitely get that kind of mysterious yeah. little subject. Yeah, totally. It. It's like 
I don't know what is some 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 rock with a with a cross. Uh huh. And you have those kind of things in in uh, Bavaria a lot. Uh, Mitch says, I want to visit that forest. Definitely, it's Lake Eipsi. It's um, right at the Mount Zugspitze. Ah, wow! Look you sh at that. should really go go there and just yeah. And this was drone stuff that I did. With That's a it. great color scheme. Yeah. And I think Ahmed was wondering, how do you pick your color palettes? Or do you pick them or do you just um, kind of use the colors from your photos? Yeah, more of the latter one. Mm, mm -hmm. um, I try to be a bit... Um, so here's this collection again. I try to um, go with natural colors most mm -hmm. of the time, but also try to enhance what's already there. Yeah. So um, when we have a look at... Um, no, that's not a good example. Yeah, have a look at this image again. Okay. Um, when I when I reset the the editing, Whoa. you see the colors have not really changed. No. Um, the, just the the exposure is mm -hmm. is the values. Yeah, it's it's better, and I added contrast and mm -hmm. punch and and all the stuff that I talked about before. Um, I do have some some little camera corrections um, and also a little bit of work in the like uh, particular curves mm -hmm. but that's just so minor right and it's really not changing the colors not really yeah. not really it just is a bit enhancing mm -hmm. and here you we can see i did not so much in in change uh, in, in terms of changing the color palette itself mm -hmm. i just was um, playing with saturation a bit and also with um, the luminance of the colors right. so we have for example the yellow is, is pushed a little bit forward mm -hmm. we can push it further and yeah you can see here when you when you look here when mm -hmm. I push the, the button uh, it will change a bit but only only a little very slightly but it is it's an important change important little change yeah sometimes yeah that, that will be a an example for okay that does not so much let's mm -hmm. try something else gotcha yeah and when we try the orange Whoa. so now you see lots of orange in that photo yeah totally and then it just blows up and actually i kind of kind of like that's it. not I, bad no yeah, I, a, bit, I a bit brighter yeah mm -hmm. so we can we can have it like this mm -hmm. so yeah um just basically how i um editing my, my, my photos. Wow, that's really cool. It, it seems much more simple than I thought it was going to be. Yes. But you really are just yeah. pushing and pulling slightly. Yeah, like I said, it's just a huge game of trial and error mixed mm -hmm. with some kind of experience mm -hmm. uh, that I accumulated over, over the time. Yeah. And just being always uh, on the look for inspiration mm -hmm. anywhere and, and just try to set yourself some obstacles like when I'm creating a story we can just quickly nip over to to behind sure so let's look at my screen Boom. yeah so we can um, watch flow for a minute sure. um, the obstacle that I set myself here okay I want to make a series about water in mm -hmm. all its um, um, like water in fluid form or liquid form and yep. water in like clouds and nebula yeah, and like also water and ice form. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that was basically the, the challenge that I, that I set for myself. Wow. And I wanted to have like a really interconnected series that really like tells a story or speaks, mm -hmm. speaks for itself. Yeah. And on, on the top of the page I wrote something like, sure. yeah, exploring the idea of cycles because it's flowing and mm -hmm. it's, it loops back on itself. You will right. see when we get to the, to the back. And just yeah, dropping into in, like into this blue world, mm -hmm. um, which I yeah I deliberately chose the color palette to be like this. Yeah. In in that case. Wow. Because you're telling a specific story. Yeah. Whoa, that's very cool. Yeah, that's this is actually the Game of Thrones grot. No, really? Yeah, yeah it is. Wow. Like when? Okay. Yeah, this scene happened. I know. Yeah, yeah. I know that one. This is beautiful. It looks like a frozen wave. Yeah, it is actually from inside an ice cave in a wow. in a glacier. Mm-hmm. Would... Jeez. So a key to taking good photos is going to cool places and taking good photos. Yeah, it it could. It helps. Yeah, it it <laughs> makes my job a little bit easier. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, 
Yeah, and like when you when you are in Iceland, you can basically photograph everything, mm -hmm. which is um, I was in Iceland like uh, three times, two times last year and one time uh, in basically 2012, mm -hmm. where I was not really uh, doing photography back right. then. Mm -hmm. um, what I did, I was just running around with my small iPhone 4S yeah, uh, the, the whole time and just shooting everything because yeah. everything was so beautiful to me. It's magnificent. Yeah, and wow. then I. I got back and had some some experience as a photographer and was just blown away by wow. everything basically here. Yeah, I really do see this, like there's ice and there's gas and there's liquid water. Yeah. So awesome. So we're almost out of time. I feel like that flew by. Totally, yeah. I'm totally impressed by your editing skills. All of this is so inspirational. Uh, if people want to find you on the internet, they find you on Instagram, Behance. Definitely. Um, yeah, I also do have a website, which is just cool. called michaelschauer.com. Perfect. So check that out if you want to learn more or be inspired by his work. And we're going to uh, end the day here in Barcelona and actually send you back over to San Francisco, where we are starting the Daily Creative Challenge with Mark, focusing on XD. So if you want to switch gears from photography to learning more about experience design, make sure you stick around here and you can um, work with Mark in just a couple minutes. So we'll be back tomorrow from Barcelona, but stick around for San Francisco and Mark. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Yay. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. See you later.